a businesswoman. For those of you who have not seen me before, uh, nice to meet everybody. So I've just got a couple of slides to share before we get going with Michelle this morning. So just bear with me a second while I share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that okay. Um, so like I said, it's lovely to see you all this morning. Thanks so much for joining us in this masterclass in self-promotion with grace and authenticity with Michelle Redfern. Um, hopefully you enjoyed today's masterclass. And like I said, for those of you who are new to us today, welcome. So before we kick off, uh, we I'd just like to take a minute to thank our strategic partners uh, for the work that they do with Meet Business Women. A lot of what we uh, a lot of what we do we couldn't do without their support. So huge thanks to them as always. Um, so for those of you who are members, you'll sort of know who we are, what we do, um, and you'll be familiar with our work. But for anybody who's new to Meet Business Women today. Uh, we are the global professional network for women working in the meat industry and our mission is to drive positive change in the meat industry and provide you with personal development, networking opportunities and mentoring to, show, to ensure that your career thrives. Um, and a great example of what we do um, through our network is our monthly masterclasses, which is obviously um, one like, like the one that you're signed in today. So we have a lot of members online today, but uh, for those of you who aren't, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what's included as uh, within a membership if, if you did decide to join us. Um, so as a member, you get, um, you get access to a raft of lots of industry resources and exclusive content. And you'll also be able to watch back all of our previous masterclasses like the one you're viewing live today on demand on our website. Um, you'll also be able to join our mentoring scheme, um, which is a really fantastic way to sort of get one-to-one -one coaching with, um, with somebody in the meat industry to sort of help you reach your goals. Or alternatively, you can become a mentor and sort of share your knowledge and guidance with somebody else who, who needs that support. Um, so as a member, you get free access to that mentoring scheme. And you'll also uh, receive discounted tickets to all of our in-person events as well. Uh, so final slide from me today, uh, what's coming up in the Meet Business Women calendar next? So on the 21st of September, we've got a members masterclass on tweaking your presentation skills for maximum impact. And for those of you who are at our May conference, you would have seen Janie Vanshall's uh, work in practice with the brilliant Beth Hart from McDonald's. Um, so Janie was the lady who coached Beth with her presentation skills. So do join us for that one if you're, if you're able to. And then on the 6th of October, we've got our next in-person networking event. So that'll be our One to Watch Award dinner. And we have Ranjit Singh, the CEO of Two Sisters, our after dinner, after dinner guest speaker there. Um, so there'll be a lovely three-course dinner, plenty of wine flowing as well, I'm sure. So do join us for that if you're able to. So I'll just stop sharing my screen um, and we'll introduce Michelle today. So Michelle is the founder of Advancing Women, an enterprise providing research and advisory services on workplace equality, inclusion and gender diversity. She's the co-founder of A Career That Soars and of Culturally Diverse Women, as well as the co-host of the Lead to Soar podcast, along with her experience as a non-exec director with board and advisory roles in the finance, sport, for purpose and supply chain sectors, Michelle's a proud ambassador for Honour Women, Flexible Working and Girls Uniform Agenda. Michelle has held executive leadership roles at NAB, Telstra and Serco during her 40 year corporate career. She's a trusted advisor to board, CEOs and leaders across the world who are serious about creating diverse and inclusive workplaces where women and other underrepresented people can reach their full potential. So a huge thank you to you, Michelle, today and I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Beck, and thanks for having me again. Uh, hi, everyone. Lovely to see you all. I uh, So, yes, it's evening for me, so I, I did notice a couple of, of colleagues from this side of the of the big ditch uh, and the other side, so our, our little sister, New Zealand. I've got to say, little sister in size, but they do so much better than Australia in so many things. So, hi to New Zealand and, uh, and New Zealanders and Australians on the call as well. 
before I start, I do want to acknowledge the traditional land or the traditional owners of the land that I'm on. So for me, I'm in Nam, which is the traditional name for Melbourne in Australia. And I want to pay my respects to elders past and present and pay my respects to Indigenous people on the call uh, and those who might be watching on Catch Up later. It's really important that I think for all of us, particularly those of us uh, who are on traditional land or, or that we know more about the land that we're on and the traditional owners and the Indigenous folk um, in, our, um, in our countries. We have much to learn from them, so thank you. Alrighty, so today we're gonna to talk about, well, I'm gonna talk, I'm actually gonna do a fair bit of talking. Now, excuse my voice, I've got one of those lurgies, which means I, I do sound slightly less like the normal me and more like perhaps the drag queen version of me. So bear with me while I've got my husky voice going on. Um, so how to promote, uh, how to self-promote with grace and authenticity. And, and I know that if I was to say to all of you right now, take yourself um, off mute, put your cameras on and tell me the greatest thing about you, I reckon we'd hear a whole bunch of dong, 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 dong as you all left the call. So don't worry, there's none of that going on. But what I am going to share with you is a whole bunch of stuff about how you might in the future, if it's not a, a skill set of yours today, how you might in the future go, I can't wait till someone says, come off mute, Michelle, put yourself on camera and tell me about yourself. So today, um, I would like to help you discover, uh, first of all, a new look at leadership. I never, ever start one of these masterclasses without taking you through what is leadership because it's such an important, well, it's been a cornerstone of my own development, um, our three-part leadership uh, definition. I'm going to help you discover the greatness in you. And believe me, ladies, you have greatness in you. Uh, it is there and I want you to be able to talk about it at length whenever you're asked or even sometimes when you're not asked. Uh, going to, to talk through the why, the what and the when of self-promotion. So why we must pay more attention to um, self-promoting, um, what it actually is and what it can look like. So what, what do I say? Um, what am I going to talk about? And of course, when? When are the opportunities? There'll be some really obvious ones that will have occurred to all of you, but maybe I've got a couple of non-obvious opportunities where self-promotion, uh, your authentic and graceful self-promotion can, can come into play. Then I'm gonna do the how. So right at the end, I'll tell you how. There's a simple recipe for how to self-promote with grace and authenticity, but there's that little bit of work in front. And then assuming we've got time, uh, we'll do some Q and A. And I know some of you have already sent through questions when you registered. So um, if I haven't covered off your question, feel free to say, hey, Michelle, I want my question answered and we'll, we'll go there. Okay, as always, um, please do use the chat function. So Sam and Beth will keep an eye on that and they know to interrupt me. I can I can be on a, a full, you know, full stream and they'll go, Michelle, there's a question or, or you know, something that I need to answer or, or respond to. So please do use the chat function if you prefer. If you'd like to take yourself off mute or use the hands up function, please do that as well. I, I, I love it to be as interactive as possible. Um, there will be a resource pack coming your way. Um, I will uh, collate that after I've looked at all or heard all your questions and your feedback, and I'll, I'll send that through to Sam to be distributed um, to you. There's also, um, there's, there'll be some stuff. I've got a couple of quite busy slides, which I don't apologise for because they've got really good information on them. They will be included in the resource page, but feel free to take a screenshot on, on the way through if there's something that occurs to you. Okay. But before we start, we've got to look at leadership. And for those of you who haven't been on a call with me before, I do see a few familiar names that we go, oh, she's going through it again. Yes, I'm going through it again. So what is leadership? Leadership underpins um, authentic and graceful self-promotion and it is also a component of authentic and graceful self-promotion. So what is leadership? Leadership is using the greatness in you to achieve and sustain extraordinary outcomes by engaging the greatness in others. That is the 21st century definition of leadership. And for those of you who are thinking, all right, well, that's great. That's a you know big deal, a leadership definition. Um, I encourage you to use this as, you know, pop it in your pocket and use it as your leadership, leadership definition moving forward because it's simple, it's uh, specific, it's inspiring, um, and, and honestly, it's easy to follow. What does it actually mean? 
Well, in the context of authentic and graceful self-promotion, it means everything. But let me break down those three components for you. Firstly, using the greatness in you. Essentially, that's you showing up, bringing your authentic self, leading from your strengths and being ambitious for the business, being ambitious for yourself and inspiring people by exhibiting your leadership presence. It's made up of all of those components. You can see your attributes, strengths, values, worldview, whole life and personal purpose. Achieving and sustaining extraordinary outcomes, um, put simply, is it's you understanding and executing your positional purpose. What's your positional purpose? It's why you get paid. So if your CEO came up to you today at work or on Zoom or wherever and said, hey, what do I pay you to do around here? How would you answer? You would answer knowing your positional purpose. What is my role in taking the organisation forward? What is my role in helping the organisation achieve its strategic and financial goals? And put simply, that rests on you having having and demonstrating uh, your business strategic and financial acumen. Third part of the definition is engaging the greatness in others. And that means harnessing the power of strategic relationships and that's through inspiring hearts, minds and efforts of people and then aligning those hearts, minds and efforts towards what's important. And what's important? Well, you'll have your own personal and professional goals, but from your organisation's perspective, it's what are our strategic and our financial goals and aligning those people. As I said, hearts, minds and efforts, and I've got aligning it towards those goals. It's being able to effectively communicate with stakeholders inside and external to your organisation by using your leadership presence. So that's a three part definition. Today, I'm going to focus on the greatness in you. I want to focus on the greatness in you because A, you've got it. And well, again, if, if I was to ask you all to come off mute, go on camera and say, I want, to, I want you to make a statement of personal greatness right now. I know there'd be many of you that would be running for the virtual door. But what I want to do is step you through understanding your personal greatness and how you bring it to your leadership and certainly how you bring it when you are asked or you have the opportunity to self-promote. So let's kick off. So the greatness in you. Why am I talking about it? And I know I've made a couple of jokes about people running for the, the virtual door when I ask them to talk about their greatness. But too often for my liking... Women are told to dial it down, to wait their turn, to be patient, to stay silent and to not play a big game. Now, we might not be told that overtly by others. Some of us have been, uh, might be autobiographical, but we are told by society that we have a place in society and often that is not front and centre. Too often for my liking, women are so busy managing life that they forget to or don't make time to stop, breathe and reflect Stop, breathe and reflect on, well, what got me to where I am and still serves me? What got me to where I am and no longer serves me? And then, importantly, what should I do about that? And too often for my liking, when I ask a woman what makes her great, she doesn't know how to answer that question. So if you identify with any one of those statements, and yes, I identify with all three. I'm a reformed, all of them, all of the above. Um, but if you identify with any one of those statements or if you have women in your life, you might be leading those women, they might be in your family, in your, or your social circles. If you've got you know, other women who do, then well, I'm going to show you the tools to really understand the greatness in you, but also to set the scene for um, graceful and authentic self-promotion. So it starts. It starts with understanding, well, I oh, beg your pardon, I've gone too far. It starts with, there we go, understanding leadership again. And with leadership, when you're in a place of pride and joy, so that, and, and I'm talking about leadership, not in terms of what, are, what whose name appears in what box on an organisational chart. I'm talking about leadership that manifests, manifests itself at every level at every career stage, at every age, in every woman. So all of us are leaders. Uh, we just sometimes have to search for what that might mean outside of the very narrow paradigms or the narrow definitions of leadership. But when we're in that place of pride and joy, in the place where we can shine, 
um, our power to engage the greatness in others, remember that third part of the definition is magnified. It's magnified because we do become magnetic because we are fully using the greatness in ourselves. And really, if we're going to shine and we're going to fully use the greatness in ourselves, we actually have to know ourselves. So the first call to action is leader, know thyself. So we're going to do a bit of exploration into just how great each of you are. So the first part of the, um, you know, of the, well, one of the parts of um, self-promotion is authentic. So you, to be authentic, you know, what does the Oxford Dictionary say authentic is? Genuine, real, not a copy, not a fake. So to be authentic, you have to be fully aware of what makes you great. I love uh, two quotes by Michelangelo, arguably one of um, history's greatest sculptors. <clears throat> and two of his quotes speak directly to what I'm going to ask you to think about and consider um, today and moving forward. Firstly, every block of stone has a statue inside it and it's the task of the sculptor to discover it. I am not calling you blocks of stone, I promise. I'm calling you sculptors. What I'm asking you to do is to look deep inside. Within the external environment that, that, that you operate in, you've got, well, there's, there's stuff going on. But I want you to think, what is the sculpture inside of me that maybe I haven't seen for a while and certainly others might not have seen? And the second quote is uh, Michelangelo saying, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved him until I set him free. So sculpture is about chiselling away the unnecessary, the excess. So there's, there's, there's a sculpture there. It might be in a big square or, or rectangle block of stone, but it's about chiselling away all the excess, chiselling away at that external in pursuit of that beauty and truth within. So now it's time for you to chisel away at the unnecessary uh, external barriers to you knowing and demonstrating your greatness. But there's work to do. There's work to do to know your personal greatness. And well, that's what we're going to do right now. So leader, I want you to know yourself and set your greatness free. What is using the greatness in you? So using the greatness in you, again, is to bring your authentic self, to lead from your strength, to be ambitious and inspiring for the business and the people you lead and exhibiting leadership presence. I really want to emphasize authentic here. It, it is authentic when it's truthful. So you, in other words, you know the old saying, fake it till you make it? Well, I'm calling BS on it. You actually can't fake it till you make it with this kind of stuff because honestly, people have pretty refined BS detectors these days. You've only got to go on LinkedIn and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. And you can tell a faker and a big noter from, you know, probably better than I can. So we want you to be truthful. We want everything you say to be based in your truth. So you lead from a foundation of attributes and strengths. You lead um, through your values. You lead when you are conscious of the worldviews that you hold, especially around your growth mindset um, and the worldviews of, of others, that you're open to the worldviews of others. You lead when you incorporate your leadership role. Uh, so you lead from greatness when you incorporate your leadership role into your whole life. So again, let's call BS on work-life balance. Doesn't exist. It's rubbish. Uh, that's a whole other workshop. Um, and you lead from greatness when you are leading from a sense of your personal purpose. So with all of that in mind and that statement that you can see in front of you, think to yourself right now, and I'd love you to use the chat or if you'd like to take yourself off mute, that's fine as well. Let's pop into the chat. What are the attributes that you draw upon and for which you're recognised? What, what are your attributes? What are your strengths? What are your values? So if, if someone was to say, hey, there we go, we've got our first one. Thank you, Hannah, empathy. So let's start getting a list. What's your list of those, the recipe for your greatness? Just give you a couple of minutes. Do write it down as well, because these will this will be a good reflective process for you. Um, post, you know, it's not a one and done this masterclass. You can keep working on your greatness beyond this. So I've got one so far. Empathy, diplomacy. Keep it coming, ladies. What else? Oh, here we go. I love it. 
calm under pressure, level-headed, fair, passionate. Thank you, Michelle. Reliable, sense of humour, honesty, kindness. Underrated, that kindness, isn't it? Patient, mm, something I'm not actually known for. Call a spade a spade, something I am actually known for. So I see you spade for spade, lady. Um, thanks, Jeff. Subject knowledge, good listener. Okay, so you get the drift. Knowing yourself means saying, what is it that makes me great? So if you think about that, all of those things, attributes and strengths, values, your worldview, your, um, your whole life and your personal purpose, that's the stuff that makes up that, great, that, you know, that greatness in you. But you've got to know it. So I really want you to focus in, what are these things? What are these attributes that make me great? And then, well, what do I do about it? So knowing yourself means, first of all, as I said, I want you to recognise your attributes. Now, I've given you a little list of attributes here. It also means, so number one, recognising. So really looking deep within. What are the things that I'm known for? What are the things that make me great? So if I look at the things that, that I identify with, um, inclusive. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm a good listener. I'm not humble. I won't say that. I am disciplined. I am hardworking, credible, yada, yada. You get the drift. So these words are, are a starter. So think about what, do you, what words um, on this list or other words are the attributes. So they're the things that you are, that you are born with and that, that really make up the DNA of who you are. The second part is to demonstrate your strengths. Now, strengths are things that we've learned to do. They are skills that are that are strengths. So, again, I've given you some thought starters here around, you know, management skills. So, don't underestimate. You know, someone can have great elements of leadership, but gee, you've got to be a good manager too. You've basically got to be able to administer businesses. I don't know if you've ever worked for someone who's absolutely fantastic. You can never get an email answered or your leave form signed or the expenses signed off. So management skills, people skills. Are you a master at networking or mistress of networking um, internally and externally? So these, whatever your strengths are, again, I want you to step back and go, okay, what are those strengths? Now, for those of you who are who really want to explore your strengths, I highly recommend the Gallup or the Clifton Strengths Finder. Some of you may um, have already done it. It's about thirty or forty US dollars, I think. So it's an, it's an investment, but I certainly took my Strengths Finder. Gee, when I was first doing my MBA, and a bit of a game changer, actually. In fact, a lot of a game changer because it gave me words and phrases that I inherently knew um, uh, to, to, to describe things that I inherently knew that I was good at. So we want you to recognise your attributes, that, that DNA stuff, and then demonstrate your strength. So exercise. I'm not going to ask you to write this in the chat, but I am going to ask you to take note of it. Finish the sentence. I am known for my. But... Um, Thanks, Satie, for the reminder. It's the Gallup Strength Finder. I'll write it in here, actually. Thank you. Sometimes called the Clifton Strength. They keep renaming themselves and I can't keep up. There you go. There's the, there's the, the, the resource that you can go to. So, finish the sentence. I'm known for my. Now, you're on your way when you start answering that question and there and on when your resource pack wings its way to you uh, in the next couple of days you'll see a couple of activities that will help you finish that sentence and a couple of other sentences why am I doing this remember I want you to know yourself because if you don't know yourself how could anyone else possibly know you how could anyone else know what it is that you bring how you can show up what we can depend on you for so got to do the work to start off with. Alrighty, the why, what and when of graceful and authentic self-promotion. So by now, so let's imagine, I, I love doing this workshop over a whole day, so bear with me because I am going whole day into one hour. So let's say that you've, I've just sent you away for an hour to do some reflection. You now know more about yourself and I want you to keep working on that. Please do promise me that you're going to spend some time 
thinking about yourself. I give you permission to think about yourself for the next few days, no one else. Anyway, but this is where the rubber hits the road. Graceful and authentic self-promotion is based on your personal greatness. So what do we do about that? First of all, let's recognise why self-promotion matters. Catalyst, so Catalyst is a global organisation that does a whole bunch of research, particularly around uh, diversity, equity and inclusion and the global leadership gender gap. So Catalyst says, when women are most proactive, so this is not reacting, proactive about making their achievements visible, they advance further. And remember, advancement's your advancement. It's not my advancement. If you want to be a CEO, great. If you want to be good at this, great, whatever. Whatever success means to you, that's what it means. But they advance further. We're more satisfied with their careers. So not schlepping their way into work on a Monday going, oh, kill me now. No, they love what they do. And they bring that love uh, in, into their workplace. And they have far greater compensation growth. Ladies, get paid, because this is what it boils down to as well. Um, and, they, and they did that at greater numbers than women who were less focused on calling attention to their successes. So if you are currently less focused on calling attention to your success, or you want to get even better, because remember the road to leadership mastery is never ending. So we never ever achieve it. We're always on that discovery and on that road. So if you're here to say, how can I level up? How can I get better? Well, this is this is well, this is why. Um, and if you were ever thinking, well, I wonder if I need to do something about this talking about myself malarkey, do it because you're gonna enjoy your job more, you're gonna get paid more, you're gonna get the jobs that you like, quite simply because you're going to proactively self-promote. And well. It's like most other leadership skills. Leadership skills can be learned and then you, with discipline practice, can be mastered. So self-promotion matters. What else? What can you self-promote about? So you're thinking, well, good day, Michelle. This is all very lovely, but I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. And there's only so often I can talk about how good a networker I am. Uh, that's only a little bit of it. So what are you on about? What am I on about? I want you to think about now, yes, there's your, your attributes, there's your skills, and there's your accomplishments. I have a brag book. It's actually not a book. It's an email folder. And in my, it's, it, I've had this folder since, I don't know, the mid 2000s and it's always named, no matter what email file I'm on, I've always got this folder called stuff. And my stuff folder is where I put good stuff. Because you know what? Every one of us has a bad day. And I get lovely emails from women and men and others about the impact that I've made to their lives or from customers. Look, when I get stuff that sounds nice and makes me feel good, I pop it in that folder. That is my brag book. And it does a whole bunch of different things. Number one, when I am having a down day, they do happen, I go back and think, what am I in this game for? That's right, I'm here to make a difference. And these, this is the evidence point. Number two, I've just had to write a pretty significant uh, pitch document for, for a big client. And they said, you know what, we want you to pitch for this piece of work. So I had to talk about myself and what I bring, go to the stuff folder. I've got a few little testimonials there, yada, yada, yada. So what, what can you brag about? What can you self-promote about? Here's some things or some ideas. Again, I encourage you to take a screenshot, but you will get this in your resource pack. These are just some of the questions that you can ask yourself and answer to have ready, because what I don't want you to have is accomplishment amnesia. Accomplishment amnesia happens to the best of us, folks. It's like, who are you, Michelle? Where have you been? Tell us how work's going. And you go, um, well, I look good. Yeah, fabulous. Um, Holy crap, what did I do? So we want you to be able to put your fingers on at any point the things that you are proud of. And it means you actually have to practice. So thanks, Brittany. Um, these things, what strengths are you known for? So some of these are personal, you know, those attributes and strengths. And some of them are about how did you make your business grow? So how, how important are you in your organisation? 
what's the contribution that you've made? What about in your industry? And I love the question about how have you contributed to your profession or your industry? Well, today you showed up. You showed up for this masterclass. And I know that there will be a bucket load of you that go, I went to this masterclass today. This strange woman from Australia told us stuff, but I want to share that with you. And then you share the learning. So this is you contributing to other women in your organisation and in the industry. And you can talk about that. The ripple effect is what I call it. I love it. So this is the stuff. This is the stuff that you can self-promote about. So it's not just about jumping onto LinkedIn or Twitter or being, you know, somewhere and being the loudest person bragging about basically nothing. It's actually about saying, what is the greatness in me that I use to take my business, my family, society, my sporting club, my social club, whatever it may be, what is it that I do to have an impact in the world? And I want you to, again, dig deep. This is the, this is the sculpting. You're bringing out the angel from within by asking and answering these questions. You don't have to do all of them, but very, very good um, practice to do. If you are very disciplined about keeping your resume or your CV up to date, and you should be, as well as your LinkedIn, these are questions that can be very, very useful to wind in, as Brittany said, to your CV, to your LinkedIn profile, to bios that you write, to put on websites, so on and so forth. When you're asked to speak at a Meet Business Women conference, so on and so forth. So this is the what. So this is what you could self-promote about. And this is actually a very small list. There are a thousand things that you can talk about. What about when? So when can you or when should you self-promote? Now, my answer is regularly. And hate to break it to you, ladies, because you've got to do it because your work, your good work is just not enough. Feedback that I get from bosses. So in the other part of my world, when I work with organisations, uh, I do a lot of research and, and surveys and things. And, and what bosses tell me when I say, why don't women get ahead? They tell me, Michelle, they're fabulous, hard workers. They've got their head down and their bum up. But they never talk about what they've done right. They never talk about what I've done right as their boss. They're so focused on their own work, doing really good work. Don't get me wrong. I think she's a great worker. But she doesn't talk about herself. So why would anyone else say she's not interested? So, and those are just some of the mindsets that we've got to help unpack and unpick. So. Your good work is not enough. I want that to be a mindset shift for you. So when can you self-promote? Here we go again. Here's another list for you. When you get a new boss. Uh, and I don't know, if you're working in big corporations, they seem to happen quite regularly with restructures. When you get a new boss, there's a great opportunity. Have a chat with them. This is, these are what my strengths are. This is what I bring to the team. Here's my ambition for the organisation. With the boss's bosses, some of you might be in organisations where... The boss's boss will do skip level meetings or you'll have the CEO doing listening to tours or whatever it may be. Great opportunity. Here's what I bring. Here's how I show up as a leader. Here's the greatness in me. Same for town halls. One-on-one um, -on -one meetings with your boss in team meetings. Now, authentic and graceful self-promotion is also about demonstrating other parts of your greatness. What about your subject matter expertise? So... What I'm really saying here is don't hide your light under a bushel. Still haven't worked out what a bushel is, but don't hide your light under a bushel. If you've got an opportunity to help take people, processes or the organisation forward through your thought leadership, help that expression, your um, expertise, you need to share that because people won't be able to see that sculpture inside of you. We want you to share that. So progress updates. If you don't do a progress update for your boss, uh, and particularly when we're working in these remote environments, think about doing a little mini dashboard. Hey, boss, here's where I'm up to. This is what I'm really proud of. Glad we nailed that. Here's how we're taking the business forward. Um, obvious, obvious ones, industry meetings, workshops and conferences. And for those of you who've been to my strategic networking workshop, this goes hand in hand um, with that. So being able to really um, up your strategic networking skills, but also being able to self-promote really well. Online, um, CV, LinkedIn, but of course, when you're asked, you will be asked, what makes you great? Now, people might not ask you as directly as that. I must admit, I do. I think I say to people, what do you love about yourself? Tell we don't talk about it. Well, why not? What do you love about yourself? 
What do you like um, about yourself? What do you bring to the world? Um, what does a life well lived look like for you? All sorts of questions that will come up socially, but they will most certainly come up in your career. Job interview, uh, whether it's for a permanent gig or a secondment, who knows? And you never know when you're being interviewed for a job. Sometimes it's happening without you even knowing it. So when someone asks you, what makes you great? And as I said, it'll be dressed up in all sorts of different ways. I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready to answer that, to say, this is what I bring. The value I create, the problems I solve, the outcomes I deliver. Those are the things that we want you to be able to talk about with grace and authenticity. Okay. So I've taken you through leadership, the greatness in you, digging deep, uh, going, you know, looking at the block of stone, bringing out the angel from within, so really reflecting on yourself and what it is that you bring, what you can say, when you can say it and to whom. But now let's finish off with the how. And this is a really, really simple process. The simple process starts with remembering it all starts with leadership. So leadership is using the greatness in you which is what you've all been thinking about and I hope you'll continue to think about to achieve and sustain extraordinary outcomes, how I take the business forward. And I want I, I want I to start figuring in some of your language as well. The we, us and our, let's say how I take the business forward and uh, through engaging the greatness in others, what you do to harness the power, the collective power of the people that you lead, the people that you're colleagues with. And Here's how it's happened. So women who are experts, when they exhibit leadership or executive presence and promote with self-promote with grace and authenticity, they know the business of their business. So they know exactly, well, they know things like, I know how we grow. I know how we make money. I know what my role is in all of this. So they know the business of the business and they can talk about it using the language of power. The language of power is the language of business. So when you start promoting, uh, self-promoting with grace and authenticity, you're talking about your role in taking the business forward. So there's number one, achieving a sustaining extraordinary outcome. Then she is articulate and confident about her attributes and strengths. So let's go right back to where we started. Know your attributes, demonstrate your strengths, and that is using the greatness in you. And then finally, she can effectively engage stakeholders inside and external to the company. And that's engaging the greatness in others. So that's the recipe for how to promote, how to self-promote with grace and authenticity. But it all starts with you. And it starts with the greatness in you and you asking yourself this question. When was the last time that I Stop, breathe, and reflected on what got me to here and still serves me, and what got me to here and no longer serves me, and what I'm going to do about that. You have to do the work on knowing the angel within. Thank you, folks. All right. Questions, comments. Take this screen off so I can see you all. I've stunned you all into silence again. I know you've got a couple of questions, Michelle, from um, people when they registered, but just quickly to say thank you. That was a brilliant session. No worries at all. Okay, so let me let me uh, let you off the hook and, and get the ball rolling. So some of the questions that that um, you sent through. Um, now, one, the one that I particularly honed in on and loved uh, is how, what, what about self-promotion in job interviews without feeling like a twit? Now, this, that, that is a terrific question. <laughs> um, and the, the, how you don't feel like a twit is to actually do the work on understanding all three, how all three parts, you bring all three parts of that leadership definition. What is my greatness? So my skills, my strengths, my attributes, all, all of that kind of stuff. What are the outcomes that I've delivered for my organisation in, in the past? So what can you count on me to do to help 
the organisation grow? And how do I bring people on the journey? So when you, when, when you're self-promoting in, in a job interview, it's probably, honestly, I think it's one of the easiest places because you actually have a hell of a lot of permission to talk about yourself and how blim and wonderful you are. So but think about it in, in the three parts of the leadership definition, but you've got to believe it. And I think, you know, there's, there's a fair bit of, there's a bit of a theme going through your questions around, I don't want to appear ego driven. I don't want to look like a twit. Um, how do I, you know, how do I um, overcome my struggle or my fear to bring my authentic self um, to, to these situations? You know, we really actually have to do the work, folks. We have to look deep within and say, what is it that I bring? There's a really nice, I, I, I touched on it before, there's a really nice kind of three-parter, seems to like things in three. Um, what are the problems you solve? So when, you're, when people say to you, what makes you great or what do you bring? What are the problems that you solve? What is the value that you create? And what are the outcomes that you deliver? And when you can answer those questions, it, it underpins a whole bunch of stuff, including, hey, I can talk about myself because this is genuine, and, but you've got to believe it. So this is why I get a bit bent out of shape with the fake it till you make it. Confidence, so we're, you know, when we think about confidence, confidence rests on your competence. You are competent, credible women, but you must pay attention to what you're competent in, competent in and how credible you are. Because if you don't believe it, no one else will. When you are confident in your competence, then you have the courage to step forward and demonstrate your confidence. So problems you solve, value you create, outcomes you deliver. There's a couple of questions I think come in on the chat as oh, well. Cool. One from uh, one from Safi. All right, where are we? Okay, can I? I'll give you an example of when I have self promoted. Crumbs, I've got about a thousand Safi. So, um, so I am, uh, you know, and and I do say to people, I am a shameless self promoter, and I am shameless because I'm actually really proud um, of what I do. So when I self promote. I was just thinking as, as Rebecca was, um, you know, sharing my bio, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, a couple of things that I need to update on that, they need my up-to-date one because it is not demonstrating a couple of other things where I'm having impact in the world. So my bio that I, because I do a lot of you know, public speaking as part of what I do, I make sure that when I'm being introduced to an audience, it absolutely nails what I want them to hear about me. I am a great public speaker. I have an impact for women and girls in the world, for business and for sport. And I'm absolutely committed to gender equality and here's how I do it. So my bio is, is and my LinkedIn um, are two, I guess, digital assets that I make sure really demonstrate what it is that I bring. I think the other way just, and, and thinking about our virtual world, LinkedIn is another great place to self-promote. Now, you might be thinking, oh, God, I'm not gonna, she's going to tell us to get on and post lovely things about ourselves. No, demonstrate your expertise. Remember, that's part of your self-promotion. Are you an expert in your industry, your sector, whatever, your profession? When you demonstrate that you're an expert by commenting on other people's posts, you know, it might be, Thanks, Rebecca, for that awesome post about the, the uh, gathering in Ireland. I was really pleased to see X, Y, Z, because I know it's so important to women to blah, blah, blah. Being generous and demonstrating that you're in the know. That's self-promotion. So, oh, look at that Michelle Redfern. She must be connected because she's talking to people in Ireland, blah, 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 blah. So it's it can be very, very subtle. It doesn't have to be that wham out there, you know, we all know a shameless self-promoter, someone that we go, oh, God, here they go again. It's not that. There are so many different ways to do it. Great question. Uh, okay. Now, what do we do when we can't find the greatness in you and you have to manage a team? Ooh. So what I, what I want you to think about is your job is to inspire your team towards group greatness inspire them towards achieving and sustaining the outcomes for the organisation. You actually have a responsibility as a leader to be able to demonstrate your greatness to them because they're depending on you to do that. If you've ever worked for a leader who is kind of a bit meek or timid or actually doesn't care, and I'm not suggesting that you're any of that, you know, that, that is a really tough gig for, for colleagues, uh, for your colleagues that, that you're leading. So I want you to dig deep. I want you to think about and really do the work on what makes you great because you are great every single one of us 
has greatness in it. But we have to do the work. This is not going to happen overnight, ladies. If you've never spent any time thinking about yourself and what you bring, now's the time to start. It's never too late, but that's what you'll need to do. Um, ah, yes. So Catherine's talked about she finds herself promoting colleagues, mainly female, and positioning them rather than talking about herself, talking about we, not me. How do you strike a balance? That's a great question. And it's interesting, my wife has just walked in the door and I always tell a story um, about her to, um, to, to women like you. So I, was, I won a global leadership award when I was working for Serco. And one of the things when I was at the, at the awards, I, thought, well, I knew I got, had, was getting the award and I was going to receive it and make a speech um, on, on this particular night about 10 years ago. And yes, I, I was a we, us, them, our, kind of person and my, my darling wife said I want to hear that you are owning this award you have got the leadership award for your leadership go up there and own it because your people are expecting you to own it again it's that inspiring others so I had to really coach myself and I do even now I have to think about this is something that I own I have done and yes other people have benefited there's been an impact on others but it's just paying attention to it. Catherine, I think you're halfway there because you're recognising it. Um, now, Brittany, great question. How do we manage this in different cultures without being disrespectful, i.e. tall poppy syndrome, very prevalent in Australia, um, or a teammate from a culture where women are not supposed to speak up? I, look, I think that's a really terrific question and it's one that we all need to be uh, really aware of, um, you know, we're in environments where, well, we actually don't know necessarily. We can make assumptions about people's preferences, interpersonal styles, cultural backgrounds, etc. So, my first, my first piece of advice is, is don't assume uh, that you either have to be silent or speak up. Um, educate yourself, um, and some of it might be that inclusive leaders talk to others that are different from them and say, "What are your preferences? Is there a way that you prefer?" the meetings to be run? Or is there a way that you prefer I highlight your achievements and your accomplishments? One of the things that, that I've really seen, which is fantastic over the last couple of years, is the opportunity of the virtual world to allow people to interact with others in a way that really works for them. So not everyone wants to be like me, on camera, front and centre. Other people are much more happy, cameras off and using the chat function. And as an inclusive leader, I'm not going to insist that everyone's on camera. I'm not going to insist that everyone takes themselves off, off mute and speaks. We just, we, what we've got to do is, is say, you work in the way that you want to work. So from, um, from that, Brittany, it's, you know, if you have a, cult, a person who is culturally diverse from you in your team and you feel like that person is perhaps not highlighting their accomplishments, have some coaching with them talk about it and say oh, it would be really great if more people knew how fantastic you were what might be getting in your way how can I help with that um, and honestly some people I, I worked with a particular woman when I was um, at the National Australia Bank here honestly she was probably one of the most experienced skilled um, terrific operators I'd, I'd, I'd ever worked with she absolutely forbade me from highlighting her, giving her awards, calling her out at town halls, absolutely forbade me. Um, now, one of my colleagues had said to me, you need to be really careful of, of this particular person. She absolutely won't um, tolerate that. So I thought, all right, well, I'm not going to take it for you know, as gospel from a third party. So I had a chat with her and I said, you know, I understand that this is not comfortable for you. Is that something you'd like to work on? And she said, absolutely not. You, it's a no-go zone for me. I said, fair enough. That's okay. So I think it's really, let's be respectfully curious with everyone and say, how do you want to do life? How do we do leadership together? How can I help you do that? That was a very long answer. What else? Have I, have I covered everything, Beck? Um, yeah, um, Hannah was just asking for a little bit of clarity on what, what is tall poppy syndrome, and I've never heard of that either. Oh, right, yes. Um, yeah, so if you think about those tall poppies in the field, uh, there's this phenomenon where we go, well, you can't be getting too big for your boots. Off, off your head comes. So I, I think it's quite an Australian thing because we, we talk about it a lot here in terms of don't get too big for your boots. 
all your britches. Um, and if you do, you'll be cut down to size. And look, I want to acknowledge the double bind here. I don't want to be uh, begrudgery. Yes, I like that, <laughs> Kerry. Um, I want to acknowledge that women are held to a different standard than men. So, you know, I, I kind of haven't gone there um, so far, but I do understand, uh, I'll cut from at the start, I do understand that when when we start to, particularly if we're starting to behave in a, in a slightly more assertive way or speaking up more, uh, we can get backlash because there are societal expectations around the roles that women play. And when though, when we do something that's outside the norm, it can be jarring for others. They go, oh, you know, oh, settle down, Michelle. You're being a bit ambitious there. Well, I am ambitious. I'm ambitious for the company. I'm ambitious for the world. I'm ambitious for myself. What's wrong with that? So we do have to learn to navigate some of that. So um, one of the, the best tips that, that I, I can give you around that is if you want to practice new skills about um, graceful and authentic self-promotion, particularly in your current workplace, find an ally, whether it's your boss or a mentor or a colleague and say, look, I'm actually going to really try hard to speak up in meetings, whether it be to share wins or to, you know, talk about how proud I am of, of my team or us. Can you back me? You know, I'm really trying, this is an area of development for me. I really want to work hard on it. Um, so help me out here. So find that colleague who can who can back you. And for some of you may have heard me talk about the amplification strategy before, but when the Obama administration was in the White House, even though it was uh, arguably one of the most egalitarian, equal uh, administrations in, in, well, in any time, but modern times, certainly, the women of the White House, particularly black women in the White House, were still being ignored, spoken over, mansplained, man interrupted, you know, that kind of stuff. So they got together and said, enough. We've got to have a strategy to overcome this. So they decided to back each other and they developed what they called the amplification strategy, which was, wow, Beth, I really enjoyed what you said um, earlier on in the meeting. Can we just hear a little bit of that again? Or, hey, Sadie, love the point that you've made. Would you come and talk to my team about it? Because I think it's really important for all of us to know that. So even if they had nothing to say in a meeting, they would amplify or elevate another woman's voice to really make sure that then, number one, she felt like she was being back, but also it made everyone else pay attention. Go, oh, actually, perhaps we should have paid attention to what Beck and, and Sadie said. So look up the amplification strategy. There's a couple of really good articles um, about it, but it's a, also a great way to self-promote because then you get known as someone, hey, she's a really great winner, um, a really great um, backer of women. She lifts other women up, blah, blah, blah. So there's another opportunity for you. Uh, any other tools other than the strength finder? I know, Jess, there is um, the VIA, so V for Victor, I for Indigo, A for Apple. Go on, think about my alphabet here. Um, so VIA is more like character uh, or characteristic. It's not, I, I don't think it's as robust as the strength finder, but there is, it is online. Uh, and I know it's pretty simple to do as well. Again, whatever it takes to build your self-awareness about your greatness. There are all sorts of tools out there. You know, you can do some very quick, even Myers-Briggs online tests. Um, another great one is the Jahari window. I'll put that in here. Um, which it's a, a way of thinking out feedback about what your, well, what your strengths are, but also what your blind spots might be, particularly around your strengths. A uh, really nifty little tool. It's been around for a while. I'll just pop that into the chat box. So anything that's building your self-awareness, because when you build self-awareness, then you can start to move into self-leadership. Then you start moving into relationship management and, you know, um, strategic scanning. That, that, that's when you have really well-developed EQ skills. There is one other question from Hannah, I think, in the chat, um, Ooh, which I think we've just about got time for. Ah, right. Okay, Hannah, great question. I'm being paid, paid less than my male counterparts. How can I start to use the self-promotion to show my value? Uh, really easy. I had this conversation with my sister-in-law last night. What is the value that you bring to your organisation? If you've helped the business grow by X percent, you know, you'd like to see a remuneration increase reflective of that. 
So I, I want you to start assembling your brag book. What is it that you've achieved and sustained? What are the outcomes that you've achieved and sustained for your organisation? Then do your benchmarking so you know you, you're paid less than one of your male counterparts. What is, so what do you want to be paid? And then say to your boss, I understand that uh, there's a salary disparity issue here. Here's the value I create for the organisation. And I'm going to do that on an ongoing basis. And then here's what I'd like to get on an ongoing basis from a salary perspective. Now, that's been quite, that's in you know, a couple of minutes, that's giving you the bump, bump, bump. I've got a great episode on the Lead to Thor podcast around salary negotiation. And part of it is assembling your toolkit. Your toolkit, what do I bring? What are the problems I solve? What's the value I create? What are the outcomes I deliver for the organisation? And I'd like to be remunerated uh, commensurate with that value. Uh, the podcast is Lead to Thor. Thank you, Rebecca. Leadtothor.com. I can't quite remember. We, you'll see it, salary negotiation tips. It, it's, uh, we only did it earlier this year. There's also, there is an episode on uh, authentic and graceful self-promotion and conversations you need to have with your boss. And they're all, they're all interlinked. Just like the leadership definition is interlinked, all of these topics are. Thanks, Hannah. Thank all you. Right. Uh, can I just do one more? Because there is a person who are key tips for self-promotion for an introvert. Introversion and extroversion. So if you're shy, um, there are many, many ways for you to demonstrate your value. And again, I want you to go back and think, what is the greatness in me? And then find the avenues or the methods that make sense to you. It might be that you start a dashboard for your boss that says key achievements, uh, things still to go, things I'm proud of, whatever it may be. You might want to start that dashboard for yourself first so you can start believing it. But for introverts, you figure out a way that works to your energy um, and works to your preferences. So this is absolutely not about standing up at the town hall with a microphone and running it. That, that is just one tiny, tiny little bit of self-promotion. Thanks, Beth. No, thank you, Michelle. Thanks so much. Um, I don't think there's been any more questions come through um, and yeah we're just about spot on time so thanks everyone for joining us and yeah loads of like loads and loads of pearls of wisdom there so thanks so much Michelle as always it's been fab great session no worries Beck. thanks everyone I really appreciate your comments um, and your, your questions so um, it's always a challenge to condense you know a lot of stuff into an hour so thank you for bearing with my husky voice and my <laughs> speaking very fast <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.